Friends, welcome to video 8D, which is about inflow and outflow. We had already discussed these two as a part of the seven key accounting ideas, which are helpful in understanding financial statements. We had also talked about in one of the earlier videos about the role of money, how money helps us to measure transactions. At the same time, money being a medium of exchange, it is very important to keep track of the inflow of money into the organization and outflow of money uh, from the organization the exactly the way we do in our own personal life we always monitor our bank balance we monitor our commitments and it's very important to keep track of our obligations and ensure that we have money to be able to pay for those obligations this is what finance professionals also have to do in the corporate world so let's talk about inflow and outflow in greater detail So friends, uh, this is a slide I had discussed in one of the earlier videos. The three green arrows in arrows stand for inflows and three red out arrows stand for outflows. What are the major reasons because of which inflows happen? Inflow can happen out of our income earning activities. In other words, whatever we collect from our customers, inflow can happen out of fundraising activity, inflow can happen by sale of assets. Similarly, outflow can happen for paying for our expenses to different vendors. Outflow can happen towards procurement of assets. And outflow can also happen towards paying off our obligations to equity owners as well as to our lenders. So, uh, as we saw in the previous slide, there are three major reasons for inflows. Before I go to them, what is inflow? Inflow is actually money coming into our bank account, simply stated. Now that can happen either because of our sale activity. Now here, sometimes the collection of money can happen simultaneously with sale, as it happens in some businesses like retail. It could happen after the sale, like in many B2B or industrial sales, where you sell goods to a customer, but the customer pays you after 60 days 75 days, 30 days, depending on the credit terms. Or in some cases, customer may even pay us in advance. Irrespective of how the customer pays us, whatever collection from customers happens, that's a great news for us because finally, it's not just enough to sell goods, it's important to collect them. Second reason because of which money can come into the bank account is because of our past investments. These investments could be in property, plant, equipment, machinery, it could be even financial investments. So whichever these assets were created for a long term use, a stage may come when we decide to sell them off. And in that case, we realize money out of that sale. That is another reason for inflow. And third reason for inflow is because of borrowing money or raising equity. So when we receive money from our lenders, when we receive money from our equity owners, that is the third reason for inflow. Now we have seen here there are three separate buckets of inflows and we are going to see how interesting the interpretation of these patterns can be when we are going to discuss cash flow statement at a later stage. But for now, let me talk a little bit about outflows and then conclude this video. Again, just like inflow of money can happen for three reasons, outflow of money can happen for three reasons again. One reason is as a part of our day-to-day -day operations, when we make payments to our vendors for different types of goods and services, that is one reason for outflow. Second reason for outflow and which is quite often very lumped uh, cash flow is when we make investments. The investment could be in a factory, in setting up of an office or it could be a financial investment. Now, the idea here is to create those assets for a long-term use. That's second reason. And third reason could be where we are repaying the borrowings or we are paying interest or dividend to people who financed us. In fact, in one of the later videos, I'm going to talk about how these three reasons for inflows and outflows are actually applicable at a personal level also. Uh, so, just to reiterate, Whatever principles apply in the corporate world, the same principles apply at a personal uh, uh, level also. And I think that's the way we can look at 
the whole accounting and finance as a subject. So friends, I hope uh, you got more clarity about the concept of inflows and outflows and I look forward to your continued participation in the videos that are coming up. Do subscribe to these videos so that you will be notified with newer editions. Thank you.